Hey everyone, this is Corinne Lafon, your favorite radio host, your only radio host and favorite girl, of course, broadcasting to you from the lovely island of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean on Between the Lines. And you know I always start my show off with gratitude or thankfulness, whichever one suits your fans. But I am so excited and thankful to be here. I am I I didn't hear the birds this morning, I think because I don't know, it was raining. So I guess they were hiding for shelter. I don't know. Or they probably were planning. You know, when you don't hear birds, they're planning. Something is up when you don't hear them. You know, so I was kind of looking out or listening out for them, not that I realized that they were not around. Hmm. I need to pay more attention to that. But I'm so thankful to be here. I wake up every morning and I say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so thankful. Even if you can't say anything else, just say thank you. Even if you can't speak, just say thank you. It attracts more gratitude, more things to be grateful for in your life. I'm, I'm really thankful to be here. Everything is working out for your greater good. This is what I was saying to Alicia. Pitts, Pastor Pitts, yeah? You can call yeah. her Pastor Pitts, but I will call her Alicia. Mm -hmm. Because I have that honor. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, no problem. Who are you talking to, Alicia? Who are you telling you on the show that you're on a recording? Yes. You're telling them, no, I can't talk now. I can't talk now. So, yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. So let me, let me formally introduce Alicia Pitts, Pastor Pitts, on the show. So Alicia Pitts, fun, fondly known as Pastor Pitts, currently serves the Millville, New Jersey Police Department. Yes. Whoa, as a police chaplain. That's why she's dressed in white people. <laughs> she, <laughs> she is multifaceted, a Christian speaker, mentor, author, singer, whoa, and musician. Yes. A woman with a lot of talent. In her words, I live a life of servitude and leading by example. Clearly. And that is the most effective means of leading others. Whoa. Yeah. Alicia is a mother to many, I am sure. I am sure <laughs> Alicia is a mother to many and has been blessed with one child so far. I added that as part of her bio. Yes. And the, her child's name is Tessia, is it? Tasia. Tasia. Nice. Mm -hmm. Sorry for mispronouncing that. She That's would be okay. very upset with me. Tasia. <laughs> so congrats on the one and the other one that is on its way to you because you need to go again. Yeah, I always tell people that. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, I can't have any more children. Oh, that's what you think. But God says otherwise. <laughs> you could think whatever the hell you want. But God says otherwise. <laughs> You're supposed to know that, Alicia. <laughs> you could say whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> ah, you laugh fair because enough. you know you laugh because you know it's true. You I know. said fair enough, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might not want it and you might fight him on it, you might have a little sit down, but he knows best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So welcome to Between the Lines. It's great to have you here. Uh thank you for having me. And what are we talking about today? Let me remind myself and remind the audience. Let it go for your sake forgive let me say that again let it go for your sake forgive why should we let it go alicia why should we forgive why well and you need to let it go in order to move forward um you'll find a lot of people you know they're hung up on their past and um i tell people um you know we must acknowledge people's feelings in the way that they feel but when did you go from being a victim to a victor yeah. You know, you you have people holding on to things for 20 and 30 years. There has to come a point in your life that you have to let that go in order to move forward. Because if not, it affects every relationship that you are involved in. Mm -hmm. And it's not fair to other individuals um, that you are holding on to something that they had nothing to do with. Hmm. And and even, it's not only people who that has nothing to do with, but even the people that has to do with whatever it may be that may not even be aware that you're holding them in in contempt or, or in your heart or in your soul. Now, now, you say people are holding on to things for 20, 30 years. One, they're still alive. How are they living? What do you, what do you think yeah. their life is like uh, holding on to that? 
um, they're probably resentful. They are probably um, bitter. Mm -hmm. um, and their re relationships are probably not all that great. Um, those that are alive holding on to it. And this is the thing that I tell people all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you are worried about this individual and most of the time that person ain't studying you they sleeping at night but, <laughs> you know when when you walk into a room or when they're there you know you getting all discombobulated and uh -huh. just different things of that nature and it, this person is 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 cool mm -hmm. and, um, and that you know, bothers you too you know when you are, are penting up yourself and then you see them cool you are even more angrier at the fact that they, yes. they seem cool and that builds up more resentment. You hate them yes. even more. So, so then on top of the already 20, 30 years of resentment, you have more resentment with the fact that they're cool and you are still holding on. Shouldn't that teach them a lesson that I should let it go? <laughs> yes. 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 And, and um, you know, I, I was always taught that we are not held accountable for what people do to us but we are held accountable how we treat other folk. And what ends up happening when you have bitter and resentment and just different things going on, you, you're lashing out at people um, that you shouldn't be lashing out at because of how you are feeling. And, mm -hmm. and don't get me wrong, we, we are stuck with the way we feel. Mm -hmm. And so this is why um, as soon as you feel it, I heard T.D. Jake say, you need to release it you know the bible talks about um not letting the sun go down on your wrath mm -hmm. and so um you know i'm the type of individual i don't want to be on my deathbed talking about can you go get so and so so i can get this right no yeah. i want to die in peace and so therefore yeah. I, I i live my life in such a way that i try not to go to bed angry with folk i, mm -hmm. I try to get it off of me as soon as possible yeah no no People, you talk about they're holding on for 20, 30 years. It could be for a day, it could be for a night. You could be upset right now. Somebody could be getting upset or a memory comes back to them and it triggers them, whatever it may be. Yes. Now, you're holding on to that and they may feel quite satisfied with being upset. I'm justified in being upset. I'm right. You know, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not resentful. What makes you feel I'm resentful? I'm, I'm living, I'm, I, I have money, I have a good job, I'm, I'm happy, I'm eating, I'm drinking. Um, I get along pretty okay with people and those who I don't get along with, I, they don't deserve to be in my life anyway. You know, um, that could be the kind of thinking of an individual. How, how do you approach someone like that? Or how can we get a message across to someone like that who well, don't want thing, to uh, accept, they don't want to accept that they, they are so resentful and they're not forgiving and they're not letting go. They don't even acknowledge what's going on with them. I think they feel comfort. I, 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 I don't really want to even use the word comfort, but it's like they, they're quite comfortable. I don't know which other word to use. It's, it's, it's like they, they're just solid in where they are thinking this is, is okay. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I, 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 I think about is um, forgiveness doesn't excuse the person's actions. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. And like I tell people, if, if, if it was based on feelings, we would never forgive because we're stuck with the way we feel. So it has to boil down to a choice. You have to choose to forgive. Mm -hmm. um, there's a prayer that I always um, tell people to pray sometimes, Lord, anoint me in my emotions. Mm -hmm. um, because you know our, our emotions are are fickle. We up today mm -hmm. and down today. Forget about yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And so, therefore, um, it has to be a choice. And you forgiving them doesn't excuse their behavior. You forgiving forgiving them doesn't mean that they were right in what they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, you're doing this for yourself, so so you can be healthy. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And 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 healing takes time. You know, um, but again, like I said, I, I realize some people don't want to let go because they want to be justified in their own behavior and how yeah. they act towards an individual or someone. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. They they just want to feel justified. I I'm, I was right. It's it's a matter of being right as opposed to what what it is that I think Les Brown and they say. It, you know, you're fighting more for right than, than to, you know, the, the correct way of, of doing things. You, you want to stand in your righteousness above everybody else. Yes. Now, somebody might listening to this may say, but hold on. 
you're talking about forgive the, I need to forgive the person for me. Yeah, the forgiveness is not for them. You're not saying that what they did wasn't wrong. It has nothing to do with that. But they need to come and ask for forgiveness. That's what they would say. They need to come and ask me for forgiveness. Isn't that another righteousness sort of a thing? Like you need to beg me to forgive you. What would you? What would? What would be your response to that? My response to that is, you may never get an apology. <laughs> um, so you 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 know you can't. Um, don't look for it. Um, I had a situation <laughs> happen to me, and um, this it, it was a it was a pastor, um, and for years they had never apologized, and so wow. just one day off the cuff. I went to a, um, to one of their services because my thing is this, I'm letting you show that I don't have the issue. Yeah. Have it. Yeah. And in the middle of the, the service, they publicly apologized to me. I wasn't even, I wasn't even expecting it. Wow. Um, they publicly apologized to me. But the thing was, I had already let the offense go. Yeah. But if I never, you know what I mean? And so this is the thing is you may never get the apology. Mm -hmm. So you still, again, you got to move forward. Don't, you can't stay stuck, yeah. you know? And yeah. so I thank God that I had let it go. And by, you know, letting it go down the line years later, hmm. here I am at a service, not expecting it. And, and, and God was already dealing with, with this individual. And, yeah. and she said, she said it openly. She said, I can't go around hurting God's anointed. Yeah. God loves Alicia mm -hmm. and I do too. Mm -hmm. And, um, when we embraced, I told her, I said, my love for you never stopped because had it stopped, yeah. I wouldn't have kept coming back visiting every yes. night. You yeah. Know? Um, and, and the thing is, sometimes somebody has to be the bigger person. Of course. Um, now, we, now we're talking uh, biblically. You know, the scripture says, um, ye which are spiritual restore. Who's going to be the spiritual person? Because even in the scripture, it tells you, it don't tell you um, wait to get the apology. It says, if you know stuff is not right mm -hmm. then you go to them and and even there was time many times with this particular individual i knew i hadn't did nothing wrong mm -hmm. and i kept going back saying you know um if i said anything if i'd done anything yeah. you know you know because you just never know you might have said something yeah. you, might have looked, you know yeah and i remember the last time i went to the individual and I'm going to them in sincerity. And it was as if they weren't paying me a bit of attention. You know, they looking all around and all mm -hmm. of that. And that's when I told the Lord, I said, all right, Lord, I'm shaking the dust off my feet. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done this more. I've humbled myself more than one occasion, went to this individual. And, you know, you can tell when stuff ain't right, mm -hmm. whether people mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. it is or not. Yeah. And that was the last time I, I did it. And then here it like I said, years later, they publicly yeah. end up apologizing to me in front of the whole congregation. You set off uh, a momentum there because you started the process, I think. That's, that's what spiritually I'm getting, you know, yes. because you decided to let it go. Because your, your timing of letting go would not be the other person's timing. Just like how you said, um, you're going to be sitting waiting on a, for an apology. You may never get it, but somebody needs to start the process. So you started it, probably within that other individual, she started it, but it was just harder for her at that time to come mm -hmm. to terms. And yeah. when she, I guess, continually saw you coming, she must have spiritually, knowing she's also a pastor, realized, you know, mm -hmm. clearly Alicia is coming to my, to my church in my congregation. She clearly must have no qualms being here. She doesn't feel any way. I need to really release this because it look as if she has released it because she's okay with coming here, you know, so somebody needs to start it. And so I guess God and the universe orchestrated everything that she realized this is my time now. It look as if Alicia has done her part. I need to do my part and make this clean, a clean slate. What would you say to persons? I mean, that is, that is like an obvious um, scenario that we spoke about a while ago. But there are people that have childhood wounds that are walking around. You know, we are born to parents. We are mm -hmm. innocent. We, we are born in situations or given in situations. And there's abuse. There's all sorts of things. And then you realize later on in life, you are abused in whatever way or form, whether physically, sexually, emotionally, psychologically. And you're looking now and saying, why, why, 
why did you do this to me? I was innocent. I was in your care. No, how do you forgive your caregivers, your parents, when you're in your 40s, 50s, and your life may be topsy-turvy and you're dealing with all these triggers, as I mentioned before, or these pains or wounds, and you find yourself attracting the same kind of toxic people into your life because you realize it's linked back to your childhood. These parents, how do you, Alicia, forgive or let go of those type of things and, 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 and deal with those wounds? How do you let go, forgive the parents and, and, and move forward? Um, some people may need counseling mm -hmm. um, to, to dig into the, 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 where the root is. Because mm -hmm. um, like you said, you know, sometimes as a child, you can have a distorted memory of something um, or, or a distorted perception of, of different things because at that time you are a child. Um, I've had many things happen to me as a child. Um, I was molested at the ages of 7, 11, and 14, huh. um, held hostage at gunpoint, just different things of this nature. Huh. And I, I think for my own self, um, there are some people that God gives them a little makeup where some people can tend to easily forgive um because it's it, it's in them it's, it's it's how they you know how they were built yeah. um so um with that being said um i believe for a lot of times with healing um there's an understanding has to take place maybe they need to have a conversation with their parents and hopefully their parents are are open um hmm to really l listen not so much try to defend their this actions is what happened and this is what happens they start to get defensive say that again they start to get defensive you you want to approach well, them or you at, do at they, yeah point, if, if they start to get defensive there's really nothing that you can do i i, I would advise going to a counselor mm -hmm. um because again, sometimes, as I said before, you may not get that apology. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the parents may be in denial and all, all, all of that. And mm -hmm. so, at that point, you really have to just work on you um, in the process of healing. Wow, wow! So counseling therapy. Look at where you have to reach at, at an adult. Look at where you have to reach at an adult point in your life. Yes. You know, trying to undo, unbrainwash, and move and move forward. It, it's Wow, life really throws you some curves. Um, yeah, and you're dealing with with persons. I don't want to call them criminals because people are in 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 um, conviction for different reasons. It could be minor things, whatever it be. You're dealing. You're the police chaplain. What are some of these situations or the most major situations you find happening? You know that you're that you're dealing with with persons in the criminal system. Um, again, um, like I said before, you know, when you look at violence and different things of that nature, um, a lot of it is because they haven't let go. Somebody offended them or somebody mm -hmm. did something to them. So, okay, I'm, I'm going to be vindicative yeah. and I'm, I'm going to pay that individual back. Yeah. And so a lot of times if, if we would just take a moment, because a lot of things, it, things happen to us and we will react instead of responding That's and right. the reaction is what a lot of times get us in trouble <laughs> um, the scripture says that we can be angry but don't sin so I tell people all the, all the time you, you know God knows he, he he gave us these emotions so it's not the anger that's the sin is what you do with that anger <laughs> so a lot of times we, we we need to be resolved and just take a moment and pause Mm -hmm. you know and, and and start thinking okay if i do this mm -hmm. what is the outcome going to be what is what is what is going to be the result of this mm -hmm. um and and we won't find ourselves in, in in certain situations so much and again it goes back to some of this stuff um as you said before is uh things that have happened in childhood and different things mm -hmm. of that nature and so then at that point you need to get a professional involved and really get some counseling mm -hmm. um and the truth of the matter is, um, a lot of the work is on the person that's offended. You know, yeah. it, it's no easy fix. And so you, they have to be willing <laughs> to want to get rid of 
get rid of things and a lot of it is 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 being honest with themselves mm -hmm. um honesty is 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 really important yeah. um in that healing process yeah you're saying some major things willingness openness honesty facing the truth mm -hmm. you know it will be harsh it will be hard it will be painful and what comes back to me is you know it has been resonating with me a lot and i've been using it as as my mantra james 1 19 where it says um be be quick to listen yes slow to speak slow mm -hmm. to anger yes that's do right. more listening and be slow to speak slow to anger and it's difficult because it comes back to the reacting and responding you know, and I say that and I feel my blood just run a bit cold in my body because it, it really resonates with me, you know, um, because we tend to be reactive. And yes. I, have, I have taken a vow, let's call it a vow of silence. I don't know if I would call it that. That's what my spirit tells me it's called. Where I, I, I follow that rule, that James 119. I listen, I watch, I use my other senses and I'm very slow to speak. And yes. slow, you know, slow to anger. Because I'm slow to speak, the anger is not going to come. It, I internalize, I watch it, I listen, I process it, I meditate on it, I pray on it, I talk to God about it, I have the conversations. Mm -hmm. I don't have to answer. And we need to be more slower in our, in our responsiveness. Yes. And don't allow person to, persons to trigger you. To the point where they demand an answer because people can push your buttons you know and demand a response from you you can say i don't have to answer you now that's right i don't you mm -hmm. can't make me what are you going to do beat me down to it well go ahead you still wouldn't have an answer i yes. don't have to answer you now it doesn't matter what situation you're in it could be work with your boss your spouse your boyfriend your wife your brother your sister your mother it doesn't matter who it is you don't have to give an answer right now. That's right. Because when I think of Christ, you know, I mean, you watch the shows, the films, the whatever. He never used to answer immediately. Mm -hmm. The man would just sit there. And, and what, what imagery is coming to me is when they were stoning the woman, Mary Magdalene. And he would have the little yeah. stick in the sand. You know, yeah. he just sat there with everybody else hollering and making noise. Stone her, kill her, whatever. And he's sitting there and people were like, master, master, don't you have anything to say? Huh? Everybody else is making noise. Say something. And he is there. He wasn't jeered or moved or pushed, intimidated, anything. Even though they were pushing him, the crowd was making noise. Master, master. He sat there, he yes. hearing the noise, his head down in the sand, and he, whatever he writing, he praying, and he turning the little stick, and he's just quietly, and he just uttered a few words. Yes. Not much. That's After right. all of that, a few words that turn everything around. Yes. Who without sin, throw the first stone. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing much. A few words mm -hmm. while the rest of them, the crowd was rearing and gearing up and cantankerous. And he just said a few words, just softly, who without sin cast the first stone? And he don't talk. Right. <laughs> he don't talk. He ain't say nothing else. Except when the lady, when she realized nobody's stoning her, she's not dead, she's still alive. <laughs> you know, he said, Well, go, you know. Who is there to, to stone you? Who is there to murder you, lady? Nobody. That's <laughs> Go right. ahead and sin no more. That's right. Nothing much. The man doesn't say much. And when he does say, it's powerful. Yes. And this is the way I, I am working and trying to live my life. You know, walking in that kind of Christ-like. And if we decide, Alicia, to walk in that Christ-like man and learn yes. from him, all these things about letting go and forgiveness becomes easy. Yes. You know, it becomes, it's hard because we're in human form. We're in the 3D, we're on That's the right. planet. It's hard. Right. The flesh, you know, the ego steps in because it wants that, it wants that sort of confusion and, and back and forth and quarrel. And, you know, it, 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 the ego needs to stay alive within you because it wants that contention. But you have to tame that. 
you have to tame that. Wow, I, I, I can't imagine your years dealing with, you know, persons in the, in the criminal system and, mm -hmm. you know, what they're going through and, and, and you know, the, the suffering internally, because the suffering is internally. Yes. What they may be going through. Wow. Alicia, this, this, this is, you know, I tell you, you know, this conversation is something that always gets me all hyped up. Forgiveness, letting go. It's hard as much as I talk about it. It's really hard, but a few of the things that you shared, which is significant, that I just want to reiterate is be open, be willing. And if somebody doesn't want to, you know, apologize or, or they're still in denial, you can't force them. You have to do this That's for right. yourself. Yeah? That's right. Yeah. And, that, and that's why you, at that point you have to, you have to work on you, yeah. you know. Um, I remember as a young girl, um, I used to be picked on and different things of that nature. And it was, a, it was a, a lady and she gave me this card and I'll never forget it. And in the card it said, be better, not bitter. <laughs> and she said, you have to remember that when um, people belittle you or they do things to you, they're trying to um, fill, fill their own resources. Yeah. Um, and she said, um, God hasn't given up on you, so you can't give up on them. Yeah. You know? and, um, and so that always stuck with me. I still have the card to this day, wow. um, but it always stuck with me. And from that point on, instead of me walking around, you know, uh, uh, walking around disgruntled yeah. um, and um, you know if someone hurt me I was trying to hurt them back mm. I, um, I, I released it after that point you know I um, love that be better not bitter and yes. you know I love that that you're still holding on to that it meant a lot to you and I think that's a, a great way to round off the show you know be better not bitter because it it eats you up you know Alicia Yes. It eats you up inside and it shows on the outside. You age, you see it on your face, you're not youthful, you don't have that joy, you don't yeah. have that vibes, that energy. It shows. Come yes. on. Although some people could hide it well, but it's still, you know, at night, it's the silence that gets you, Alicia. You know it's the silence when you hear the voices and these things replay in your mind you know it's 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 awesome you know um i want to hop over to your website alicia uh give me the website again let me grab um, a page here it's um www.aliciapitts.com mm -hmm. and that's a l e e c h e a p is in paul i double t is in tom s is in sam.com mm -hmm. let me see if i i could spell here type and spell at the same time. There we are. I did good. <laughs> All right, let me share the page. There we are. Let me kind of pull this down. Great. So this is it. So we have persons who may want to join the list. You encourage them to put in their name and their email. What would they be getting? You said some marketing and promotional materials, like what? Yes. Um um, in this, um, I, I do a blog, mm -hmm. so I do, you know, just different things um, that I talk about, um, which is, all, the blog is on the website. Mm -hmm. um, um, bookmarks, they may get pins. Um, there you go, yes. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, different things that I, I put on the web um, as well, besides um, giving them an update on, you know, where I may be, whether it may be a speaking engagement or a book tour. Fabulous. And as a police chaplain, you have time for that, Pastor Pitts? <laughs> yeah, my, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you find the time to write a book? Let's look at that book. Let it go for your sake. Look at that image. Do you see that? You're behind this thing trying to get out. You're fighting to get out. Yes. Mm? For your sake. It's not for anybody else's sake. It's for That's your it. sake, your soul. Forget everybody else. Yeah? So they can get a copy of the book here. It says $15. Yes, Is it, it also? 
on mm-hmm. Amazon um, mm-hmm. or Kindle. And mm-hmm. also, um, if I'm in an area, um, they can get it directly from me as well. Okay, great. And where are you, just to let people know? I am in Southern New Jersey. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. And I did say that in the bio as well when I introduced you. But you know, repetition is very good. So we have the book. Let's come now to the gallery. And there you are, Pauline Ministry. That's, that's your, um, yes. what you call that now, your, your, your tag on your Facebook, etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. And the, is that the music? Look at you. What, what instruments you play? <laughs> the keyboard and drums. Nice, nice. Thank you. But my love is for the keyboard. <laughs> this is nice. So of course, this is all the sh- social proof of you doing your work out there, empowering women. Oh my goodness. Serving, serving. And that's in the police. Mm. Yeah. There you are. Isn't that awesome? You're doing, you're doing the work of God. How does that feel for you? Is that what you always wanted to do? Did you think you would line up in this direction? For the most part, yeah. I was born for it. Um, yeah. I've I pretty much was practically born at the altar and, um, (laughs) (laughs) you know, as a child, um, again, I just think it was something, I was a unique child. Um, I love church. Um, I remember, um, there was a revival going on at my grandfather's church and I wanted to go. And, um, at first my mom said no. And so I kind of like begged her and she said, okay, you can go, but you better get up in the morning for school. You know? (laughs) So it's, it was, I just believe it's just something that God had in me, Yeah. Um, you know, um, just different. I can even remember going to school and the kids were calling me Pastor Pitts then, Oh. Uh, you know, church girl. And so, wow. so, so you had no choice. You had no yeah, yeah, choice in the matter. I'm you, a fourth generation preacher. Um, I have many pastors in, 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 um, uh, in my family. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Oh my God. I, I, that's a holy family. I could imagine when you all get together, it's a whole lot of praying and praising and talking yes. and yes. positive thoughts. Even, yeah. even musically. Um, all my uncles play string instruments, um, oh. singers, and just different things of that nature. So definitely. That's it was nice. A, a that's nice. What, what are, I mean, this is, this is awesome. You, you're really doing the work of God. I'm happy. You know, there are few that are chosen. I think, all of us are chosen in our own way to do things. It mightn't be as a pastor, but we have, we have been given a package, as, as another guest told me on my show. We have been given our own package to carry out our work. Mm-hmm. And it may not be in the form of a police chaplain or even a priest or a nun, but we have our own ways that God knows. You know, Corinne is not going to be a nun or Corinne is not going to be a police chaplain, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but this is how she's going to serve. This yeah. is how she's going to serve. So we're all here to serve. That's, that's what Jesus came here to do, to serve. Yeah, so we must follow in his lead. Are there any final words, Pastor Pitts? Um, I just I first want to thank you um, for, uh, for the interview. And um, the thing I will leave with anyone to, to remember is forgive to live. Mm-hmm. Forgive, to, forgive live. to live. Forgive to live. That's the next book, right? Forgive to live. That's the next book. Yeah. Work on it, Pastor Pitts. Work on it. <laughs> <laughs> Work on it. Forgive to live. Isn't that awesome? Nobody would think of that. Forgive to live. Yeah. And I'm actually actually working on um, a book right now. It's, it's a memoir. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's entitled Memoirs of a Pastor, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I'm not perfect. I'm only human. I'm not what? I'm not perfect. I'm only human. Oh, yes. But we are perfect in God's sight. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. We are perfect in his sight. So it doesn't matter what you think. We are all his children and we are perfect. There's nothing wrong with you. The mole on your face, the twisted nose, the bump on your head. It's perfect. (laughs) Perfect. Thank you so much, Alicia Pitts, Pastor Pitts. Thank you, Miss Kim. Yes, for being on my show. I, I'm so glad I had you yeah. here. You, you set the tone for the rest of my day, and I thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you.